Hello everybody, here we are once again on site with John Collins from Ace Electrical Training. I've got my uh, young apprentice with me today, Paul, and what we're doing at the King's Head in Litchfield is some on-site testing on a sub-main board. We're just going to be testing these sockets out, I'm just a radial circuit, it's not a ring final. But what we're going to be using is the new QTEC KT300 tester, individual tester, same colour cording as on the other QTEX, light blue for insulation resistance as you can see from 50 up to 1000, and dark blue for continuity. So if I turn it on, it gives you the battery strength. And the first thing we need to do, because it doesn't display the null, is a null. Paul's got the socket adapter in his hand, and what we've done, we've linked out the R1 to R2, so we need to cancel the null of all these leads. So he's put his crocodile clip on the R2, nice and tight on the R1, and all we simply do is press the continuity for the null. It gives us the value, and then I press the test button, and as you can see there, it's cancelled it out, and we got the null. It's as simple as that. Now, we're just testing the one circuit, a ring, uh, not a ring, it's a radial. So what we're going to be doing is most people link out at the consumer unit, the distribution board, but I'm going to do it the other way around. Because it's all in one room and the cover's off the board and we've isolated the individual circuit, I'm going to stay at the, the distribution board having complete control. In the same room, I can monitor Paul what is pushing in the socket adapter and I can do the test from the board. To help me, the KT300's got a little magnetic clip there. So the board itself, all I'll simply do is pop that on like so. So you can see it's on there. Onto the DBMET, the earth connection. And we can see this one that's been locked off. So Paul, if you put it into the first socket and leave it switched off, please. All I'm gonna do, put it onto the R1. So we've got an R1, R2 connection. And what we can see on here, if I press now the test button and I press the hands free. So I press the hands free. We haven't got a circuit because the socket is switched off. Can you turn the socket on, please, Paul? So Paul turns the socket on. If you look now, you'll see a value of 0 0.07. This is test method one. And what you're seeing now, 0 0.07, is the resistance of the R1, R2 at that socket. Turn it off, please, Paul. Double sockets, we have to do both points, so we'll plug into the next socket. Turn it on, please, Paul. And what we'd expect to see is the same, but, and now you can see it there, 0 0.07. And on my drawing, I'd record 0 0.07 for that particular socket outlet. Turn it off, please, Paul, and go to the next socket. Okay, turn it on. There you go, 0 0.17. Because the socket's getting further away, it's got additional cable, additional cable with additional resistance. And as you can see there, the socket is being tested, and we're getting a value of 0 0.16. Turn it off, please, Paul. And into the next outlet. Try and keep the pressure the same one when you're doing it, so it puts it in, okay? Now, when you get new sockets, what you have to do is push them in and out, push them in and out. So if you go back to the previous socket port and just push that in and out a few times and operate the switch, say, three or four times, and this is why it's important to test both. Okay, so leave it back on. There you go. Now, if you look at the tester, it's measuring 0 0.11. And this is what a lot of people make mistakes on site. When they put new sockets in, they don't test both sides, they don't check the switch in. It's important to loosen up them switches because really we should be getting approximately the same value. We go down to the next socket, the last one on the circuit. It's switched off. Turns it on. There you have it, 0 0.13. Turn it off. Next socket. And again, we should be looking for approximately the same value. 0 0.12. So 0 0.13 with that. And that'll be the highest value to record for this radial circuit for its R1 plus R2. We can also put a tick in the polarity because we've checked all the switching at every socket outlet to confirm it works. It's as simple as that. So to recap, doing test method one on a radial socket outlet using the KT300, making the link at the outlet and putting the tester at the distribution board. Nice and simple, cracking little tester. Just remember folks, Johnny Ace is on the case. <laughs>